Good afternoon, I'm <coughs> Broccoli, <coughs> son of the legendary Chris Lee, and you're watching the 2 o'clock news here on WLU-TV 13. You don't even say anything. Well, first off, we're going to have a story from our reporter Joe King talking about the stupidity epidemic here on campus. I'm here today on West Liberty's campus to investigate the epidemic known as secondhand stupidity. So what is secondhand stupidity? It's when someone does or says something so stupid that it makes you lose brain cells and lowers your IQ. While this concept has been around since the beginning of mankind, students here are facing exposure to stupidity every day at alarmingly high rates. One out of three students are as likely to face secondhand stupidity as the other two. We're going to ask a few students how they've been affected by secondhand stupidity. Hi. So, how would you explain the epidemic of secondhand stupidity here on campus? Well, what I know of this, I guess you'd call it disease, is that it acts kind of like secondhand smoke. So it kind of makes me nervous to approach people affected by it because I don't want it to, you know, affect me. But I haven't heard if it causes cancer or not, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Thank you. Have a nice day. Buckle up. What was that? Could you tell me the signs and symptoms of secondhand stupidity? I mean, I think I have them. Is it like like that one time I put a crayon in my nose that I so far that I touched my brain with periwinkle. So, how have you or your friends been affected by secondhand stupidity? Well, as you can see, um, example A right here, his name is Kyle Lindsay. We got a wire there. Example B. Oh, sorry, I'm letting him, yeah, he's a special one right there. And the worst of all right here, the reason I'm failing 90% of my classes, um, I'm not getting any more sleep, I'm having trouble, I'm having visions, and right now they're taking effect on me, and my grades will greatly suffer, and I hope that I can make it out of here with at least a decent grade, and hopefully my mom will take me back in the house, you know, just wishing to Does live in the dream. Does paint taste good? No, they do not. Just like wood chippings do not taste good. Or, or what about the time I ate four and a half moth balls and thought that I'd become a moth? <laughs> I thought I was going to go to the New River Gorge and like and invade there because I'd become Mothman. But it just didn't work. <laughs> you just made me so sad. <laughs> I just wanted to be the Mothman. So, have you been exposed to secondhand stupidity before? I like cereal. Any other comments? I like cereal. The best way to limit your exposure to secondhand stupidity is to avoid persons with lower intellects. Walk around with books at all times. The heavier, the better. Go to a safe zone such as a museum or a library. Avoid Starbucks at all costs. If you are exposed to extreme secondhand stupidity, be sure to stop, drop, and roll, which works 72% of the time, every time. Remember that our brains are like sponges. If you surround yourself with idiots, you're going to soak up the stupid. I need to get out of here before it's too late. See, I really personally connect with that Mothman story. It's almost like we're the same. Next, we're going to take a look at Hair and Barbers on the Hilltop with the Hilltopper Barber Talk. 
Hey, what's up? I'm Jeremiah Ortiz coming to you from West Liberty University. And here on the Hilltop, we have some competition. And I'm not just talking about sports. A question that's been lingering around here for years now, who is the best barber on campus? We did some digging, and here's what we found. Who's the best barber? I'm gonna have to be, it have to be me. Uh, I've, been cutting, I've been cutting up hair since my freshman year. It got, I've been cutting more heads as the year went on because I got better. You know I mean? At first it was just, I wasn't really charging people because I was just new to it, cutting other people because I always cut, cut my own hair if I didn't go to the barbershop. So cutting other people's hair is different, a lot different. I mean, I started cutting myself like I was, um, first of all, I started fooling around cutting myself when I was in middle school, my hair up. Going to school, my hair up. But I learned to cut my own hair for a while. Then I started cutting my little brother if we, if we didn't go to the barbershop in high school. So it's been like plus five years here at West Liz. It's been, it's been a good bit. I take pride in it because why, why not take pride in something you do? You know what I mean? You gotta take pride in everything you do. I only have like a year's worth of experience. Some people have been cutting their hair and other people's hair for a couple more years than me, but I feel like they lack raw talent, and that's just something I was blessed with. So would you say that you're the best barber on campus? Man, see, that's not something I really care about, but I charge the most for a reason. So, my clients tend to care about their hair more than other clients that go to other barbers. And I'm not gonna say any names, but down the hall, we have a barber that is known to notoriously mess people up. So, so what's your favorite cut to do? My favorite cut? Yeah. Uh, I like doing burst fades. I do burst fades on Sully D a lot, and sometimes Dev Hearn, basketball player. Um, I used to do that cut like four times a week whenever Seeger Bonifit was here. And who else got that cut? Can't remember. Oh yeah, Aaron on the football team. Who's the best barber on the hilltop? I mean, you know I'm about to say me, but uh, there's some good haircut up here on the hill. We got Zeke May. Zeke May cut some good hair. Jamil. Uh, but overall, I think it's me though, let's be honest. <laughs> they don't got these wrists, J.O. They don't got these wrists. You either got it or you don't. Uh, I'm not gonna say they don't got it, but I know I do. My favorite cut to do would have to be definitely a fade. I'm definitely a fade guy. I think a fade can really clean somebody up, make them look real nice, so we'll go with the fade. I think I give my customers, if you want to call them that, uh, a better experience. You know, that they come in here, they watch TV, got a nice cape for them, I talk to them. And when they leave here, they usually leave satisfied. You know, that's the ultimate goal. Whoever's paying for your cut, if they're feeling good about it and everything, that's all that matters. So we'll say I offer better customer care. I like to make people feel good. You know, I like, I always know what it was like growing up, getting a fresh cut at the barbershop, the way you felt. And my ultimate goal is to make whoever comes in my room and gets a haircut to feel like that. Cause I mean, who doesn't like getting a fresh cut, you know? The perks of cutting hair on the hilltop is definitely the money. The money's always good. You know, people always gonna need haircuts. So, uh, you know, I'm available usually all the time. Uh, I would say also just seeing people around that, you know, hearing about them people get compliments. And, uh, you know, when you see that they're getting compliments and they come back to you and say, you know, thanks Ty, like thanks for this haircut or something, it just, it makes you feel good. Would I make a career after college as a barber? Definitely, most definitely. I think, uh, you know, as a barber, like I said, it's always gonna be in business, you know. People are always gonna need haircuts, so I figure as long as I keep this, uh, you know, talent or skill, you wanna say, I should be able to make money for a while. Well, there you have it. As you can see, all these barbers have something to offer. As for who's the best, we'll let you decide. Stay fresh, Hilltoppers. We out. Now that got a little hairy. Now for something a little bit hairier, there's been word that there's a menacing beast on campus. Dr. Fanny Packer is on the scene now with more.
Liberty was the safest campus here in the state of West Virginia. That is until the omnivorous Prakyan Lotar invaded our campus. Reports of raccoon sightings has spiked since spring break. But we have the chance to catch this raccoon in action. Here we have our first witness. Probably the first in our raccoon case. Can you tell me what the raccoon looks like? Can you give me a description? Everyone stay safe out there. I have to go now because I have a earth-shattering poop to go take. Okay, I didn't take it yet. Okay, cool, cool. We're still good. Alright, bye guys!